Hi, it's Dan Kinselman. I wanted to take a few minutes to just kind of introduce you to my saxophones. I'm planning on making a short video talking about the characteristics of each of these instruments uh, during the next week or so, and I'll be re releasing those gradually here on YouTube. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, please follow my channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get the next update for when I upload. Uh, these are all vintage instruments, and I'm going to be uh, showing you them individually and maybe also doing some comparisons. So thanks for following. Here we go. This is my main instrument right now. It's a 1931, uh, from my uh, research, it's a 1931 Con transitional model. And I bought this. Uh, this is the replacement for my 1961 Selmer Mark VI, which was stolen from me during a train trip. Um, few years ago, and it's also uh, thanks to some really generous support from a crowdfunding campaign. Thank you to all of you who contributed to that. I was able to buy this and get it repaired and get a nice case for it, and uh, with actually very little cost to myself. So almost all the costs to what I ended up with were covered by the crowdfunding campaign. I have had this overhauled completely. I planned on that when I bought it because uh, I was able to buy it for cheap and knowing that I was going to have to have it overhauled. But I did that intentionally because I wanted to have some modifications done. So you can see here some details of the key area. If any of you have these instruments or know these instruments, uh, you can see that there's been a number of modifications and I'm gonna talk about that when I actually do the video on this instrument. So the next one is actually another instrument that I bought with money from the crowdfunding campaign. So I ended up with two saxophones after having lost one. And this is an interesting one because when I bought this one, it's a Ramponi and Cazzani. It's an Italian uh, artisan saxophone manufacturer, which actually still exists. Um, I don't have exact details on this, but I was told that it was built in the 1940s. And it looks a lot like a Con New Wonder 1 uh, in terms of like the shape of the body and the keywork. I think they were heavily based on that design, perhaps vice versa. And uh, this one, I actually had gone to visit a, um, a saxophone player in Milan who had a Khan transitional model available. And I went to see him because I was interested in this transitional model. And um, I didn't like it. It had some problems and I didn't like it. But I saw this thing sitting on a shelf and I asked him if I could try it. And he said, well, you can try it, but it's broken. Um, so at the time, this cage here had been, uh, it looked like the instrument had been dropped and the cage had been sheared off. And it's been repaired in the meantime. This was kind of a quick repair, so it doesn't look amazing. Um, I don't know how well you can see that in the video, but you can see that the foot of the cage here is kind of shifted and this is also not very well soldered on. Um, so it didn't seal all the way down to the bottom, but when I played it, I thought, oh my God, this is like really fun to play. It's got a really cool sound and it had this really free kind of like vintage kind of almost uncontrolled wild feeling to it that I really liked. And I asked him how much he wanted for it. And I think I bought this for 800 euros, maybe even less than that. And I think it's an incredible deal. So uh, this is one that I'm actually planning on getting fixed up. I did play this as my main instrument for a few months. It has some really serious intonation problems. And I'm not sure if that's, that's something that can be resolved by an overhaul or not. But for now, it's playable, but it's really pretty tricky to play it in tune. So um, that's actually, I was almost thinking about keeping this as my main instrument until I realized how kind of serious those problems were. And that's when I decided that I really wanted to get to the con as well, so. And then finally, this is the newest arrival. I've actually owned this instrument for about 20 years. And this really is one of those examples of, you know, my uncle bought this for me and gave it to me as a gift. And it was actually one of these things where he found, like his neighbor found it in his attic or something. I think he bought it for $150. This is a Busher Aristocrat alto sax. And uh, I'm gonna have to look up the data on that. I didn't do my research yet. But if you look at it closely, I mean, I think this is from the 30s maybe, or 40s. Look at the condition of the lacquer. I mean, it's in the engraving. It's original lacquer and uh, some like beautiful engraving. And uh, even the keys are really gently, you know, it was really gently treated and I think not played very much. And then just sat in an attic for a long time. So when I got it, I'm pretty sure most of the pads were original. I had to have it overhauled because they were all kind of destroyed and eaten by, you know, 
insects and things like that. It didn't really play, but um, now it plays. It plays great. This one has some intonation problems too, but it's got also a really beautiful warm sound. So I'm gonna, and this I've had no actual modifications to the key work. So this is all basically original as it would have come from the factory or perhaps a little bit better because now it's like, you know, been carefully overhauled. And another cool thing that I found in the case was this original Busher ligature, which I don't know how easy it is to find these things now, but I think it's pretty cool. It's got the little bees and the screws. So anyway, my plan is to make some videos of me demonstrating these instruments over the next week or so, maybe a few weeks. And I'm also gonna do a, definitely do a comparison between the Khan transitional model and the Ramponin Katsani, um, because I think the Ramponin Katsani is really punching way above its weight and is an amazing instrument. That's definitely something I would recommend you look into is maybe a vintage Ramponin Katsani. If you're looking to get into a vintage saxophone, but you don't have, uh, you can't afford to get into something a little bit more kind of high profile, like a King or a Khan or a Selmer. So anyway, thanks for watching, please subscribe. And um, I also wanted to uh, let you guys know that I'm doing a, I'm running a weekly or bi-weekly transcription parties now where we're exploring transcribing jazz standards by ear without the use of instruments. And there's a mailing list um, available for that if you'd like to participate, it's free. Um, and uh, people of all levels are welcome. So please think about signing up for that if that sounds interesting to you. I'm gonna put a link in the description. Thanks for watching, bye-bye.